Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And finally, we are starting with the yoga series. And today we shall discuss the four types of yogas in Vedic Astrology. All right, there are many, many, many yogas, but primarily they are categorized into four types. Okay, so this is not a video on yogas or different yogas. This is this is a video on types of different yogas. Okay. And how do you know that two planets, as you know, yoga means to add to uh, to add to something basically, something which is already existing. So therefore, yoga means that a planet is individually there. He can do certain things, but he teams up with another planet or more than one planet. Okay. So then these two or three or four or five or sometimes maybe eight planets yes eight planets or maybe all the nine can form yogas so therefore it is very crucial that we know if two planets are in any kind of yoga okay because when two planets are in any kind of yoga their power is enhanced okay when i say power i don't mean the good side i also mean the hard side okay so there are many yogas which we will discuss later individually. But today we shall discuss the four types of yogas. Okay. So the first type of yoga and uh, you can take this in the descending order, which means the power of the yoga decreases as I go below. Okay. So the first yoga is the most powerful yoga. Okay. Which means the first yoga this yoga it gives results directly from the birth okay which means this is known as parivartan yoga okay so what is parivartan yoga parivartan yoga means if two planets are sitting in each other's houses which means let's take an example the fifth lord is in the sixth and the sixth lord is in the fifth Parivartan means exchange. Not exactly, but you can understand it like that in English. Because uh, Sanskrit is very intricate. There are many meanings of one word. Okay, but in loose terms, it is exchange. <laughs> so it's like saying, I am protecting your house and you are protecting my house. Okay. So therefore, this is the most powerful form of yoga. Because... This yoga gives a dependency to each of the planets to protect their own house. If they, if they do not protect this house, then why? Because, the, because if a planet destroys that house, then the dispositor also gets damaged. Okay. So for example, if Rahu is in Gemini in the seventh house, if Rahu damages that house, then Mercury also gets damaged. Okay. Or if the dispositor is destroyed, then that planet also gets destroyed, which means if Rahu is in Gemini and Mercury is very badly placed, then Rahu also faces a lot of challenges. All right. So therefore, it is like they are not only protect they are protecting each other because they are each other's dispositors. Okay. And if enemies also undergo this yoga, then also it gives full results. Okay, which means uh, if the uh, if uh, natural enemies like uh, Sun Saturn they are also in Parivartan, which means if suppose Sun is uh, in Aquarius uh, and then Saturn is in Leo, okay, because Sun only rules one sign, so Saturn must be in Leo for Sun Saturn Parivartan, and Sun has to be either in Capricorn or Aquarius to fructify the results of this yoga. So therefore. And this yoga holds true irrespective of somebody's uh, birth and dashas. Okay, this yoga is always active, which means they they don't need any particular dasha sequence to become activated. They don't need any particular uh, any other any help of any other planet or any other yoga to be activated. That that is what is the meaning of this yoga, especially okay, parivartan yoga. So we will discuss Parivartan Yogas later in detail, but this video is an introduction to the four yogas. So this is the highest and the most strongest form of yoga that any two planet can go in. Okay. 
and uh, it is also said when uh, a planet is in parivartan then they change the sign okay so which means suppose uh, let's take the example of a uh, capricorn ascendant okay so i was giving the example of fifth lord in six sixth lord in fifth so fifth lord venus is in gemini sixth house and sixth lord mercury is in taurus in the fifth house okay so then it is like saying that uh, mercury is in the 6th house and venus goes to the 5th house okay they say they exchange their signs okay or their houses whatever you want to call it anyways we shall discuss that later not now because then the video will become very long and then the next form of yoga which is one step weaker than that is the yoga for conjunctions okay so which means two planets are conjunct together in any house in any sign all right and uh, this yoga is also very powerful there is absolutely no doubt about it and therefore these yogas also give very powerful results okay not good good and bad both okay so therefore when two planets are conjunct it is like saying you are you, you are sitting in a room and there's another person okay so if they are very close which means if they are within one or two or even i have seen in 3 degrees then they are in some kind of graha yuddha which is uh if planets are you know very close to each other then they are they are trying they are quarreling for who will have a say in that house okay they are they are fighting for having power and authority there and which is the planet that is more powerful within a conjunction okay which is that planet well the sign shall decide and the house also so within a conjunction the two planets can be powerful in different ways okay which means suppose you let's take the example of uh, again let's take capricorn for example now if a capricorn ascendant imagine the 10th house of a capricorn okay is a perfect example fits very wonderfully so imagine there is a capricorn ascendant and 10th house is libra okay now suppose sun is sitting in the 10th house and saturn is also sitting there which means sun saturn are in the 10th house in libra all right so then what does this mean well this can mean a million things <laughs> but what i am trying to tell you is here sun is powerful by house placement because he is in directional strength he is in dikbala so he is extremely powerful there when it comes to the house okay but 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 saturn is exalted there he is more powerful by sign okay now you may be thinking oh this is a very bad yoga or this is the best yoga to have sun saturn are helping each other or they are beating each other they are killing each other they are torturing each other and they are ruining your 10th house no none of that is true okay the truth is they will have their strengths individually when uh, but it depends on which area you are talking okay so if in that case for a capricorn ascendant the mahadasha of sun is running or sun antardasha or pratyantardasha in any, anything related to sun not too much pratyantara i would say at, at least antardasha is required and the mahadasha lord is supporting okay or if sun mahadasha and antardasha lord is supporting then the person can have some level of success during that time why because sun the karaka for success name fame is in dikbala he is very strong there okay house wise all right because the results are dependent on the house not on the sign okay but what does it mean a debilitated planet in dikbala this means that the planet although he is giving these results of the 10th house but the awareness is very low the beginning is very low he has started from a very humble position okay and there are many meanings to a debilitated planet which i will discuss later or i have made also videos on debilitated planets you can watch them And now what does this mean that saturn is there he is exalted there okay so it means the awareness is very high so when the lagnesh is exalted because capricorn is ruled by saturn so the lagnesh is exalted so in the dasha it will also give name fame but it will be with high awareness okay that is the difference the person will exactly know 
how to be a good leader how to focus on things which will make uh, the organization better all right so that is the meaning so they will have their individual strengths and weaknesses okay and uh, so that does not mean that sun saturn will cancel out each other no they or they will damage the 10th house no but yes because they are conjunct they are in some kind of a yoga okay now if you check for capricorn sun rules the 8th house okay so 8th lord is conjunct the first lord and the second lord because saturn rules first and second so they are sitting in the 10th house okay so that means somehow there can be a stress between the family and in-laws and your health and career okay your in-laws may push you to go to some another direction which might give you more name and fame but then you may feel i have no knowledge regarding that area because that eighth lord sun is in debility okay and you may feel that uh, i need to be doing what i want because you as the lagnesh is exalted which means you are very aware of what to do in matters of career but then that's the predicament it's like saying that what your in-laws are suggesting will give you a lot of name fame because of sun but the awareness is not there okay or your will is not there your interest is not there because it is in debility okay so that is what it means when we say this conjunction is taking place in the 10th house okay and then the uh, third kind of yoga it is known as the yoga for aspect okay which means two planets are aspecting each other okay so we know uh, sun moon mercury venus okay? they have one aspect only they aspect the 7th house from wherever they are sitting and then we have um, jupiter which aspects the 5th 7th 9th and saturn aspects the 3rd 7th 10th mars aspects the 4th 7th and 8th and rahu aspects the 5th and the 9th okay and ketu i generally do not take aspects okay and some also say rahu aspects the 12th house from where he sits and because he is retrograde eternally so it is actually the second house so if rahu is in 4th house he is a aspecting the fifth house they say like this okay but in general i have seen fifth and ninth aspects for rahu working perfectly the second aspect i have not seen much so i don't quote, i don't speak that with much conviction but because many astrologers take it so i am also telling you as a piece of information you can see if that works for you you can use it if it doesn't work don't use it <laughs> all right so aspect means i have made a video on aspects of planets okay what does it mean when you say a planet is aspecting another planet or is been aspected by another planet okay so you can type aspects exotic astrology you might find that video surely so aspect means a planet uh, is actually desiring something else okay because that's the trait of the material world materialistic pleasure never makes you never makes you satisfied so the seventh house is the farthest house which means if you go from the first house it's the farthest and from the 12th house also it is the farthest so seventh house from any house represents those things which a house things he cannot achieve okay so that is why he is always desiring those houses okay so if two planets are aspecting each other okay then what does this mean this means that they are in a way dependent on each other okay it is like parivartan only but the difference between this is they are individually independent okay in parivartan they are not individually independent so the dependency is more so the yoga the connection is more strong but here aspect means okay i want to give and i have something to give and take because seventh house is libra right give and take i have something to give you because i want something from you i want to get things from the seventh house now you are sitting there okay so therefore i will give you something so that you give me what i want all right and the other planet is like okay you want something take it but mm, give it to me also <laughs> so it's like a business deal okay and the yoga for aspects they are primarily active during the dashas okay so during the dashas these aspects get activated okay and uh, when i say aspects i mean the normal parashari aspects okay now there are also gemini aspects okay which means gemini says 
uh, the movable signs aspect the other uh, fixed signs except the one next to it okay and the uh, and it's vice versa also and the dual signs aspect the other dual signs okay so for example if a planet is in uh, aries then it will aspect uh, leo scorpio and aquarius it will not aspect taurus because although taurus is a movable sign but it is a sign next to aries okay and a planet in um, sagittarius can aspect gemini virgo and pisces because dual signs aspect the other dual signs and they say that the gemini aspects are holding importance irrespective of dashas okay which means they are they are eternal they are like parivartan yoga which means they can give results even without dashas okay that, that that flavor always permeates throughout the horoscope irrespective of which dasha you are running okay that is gemini aspects so that yoga is also very powerful and the least powerful of all yogas which is the fourth type of yoga is uh, it's known as a sukshma parivartan okay uh, which means this uh, let me give you an example to explain the fourth type of yoga one planet is sitting in another planet's house okay so suppose the 10th lord is in the ascendant okay so let's again take capricorn ascendant example the 10th lord for capricorn is venus okay so venus is in capricorn all right so 10th lord is in the lagna okay but now this saturn saturn is not sitting in libra saturn is sitting somewhere else by which he is aspecting libra let's take an example suppose saturn is in leo saturn is in leo in the 8th house so from the 8th he aspects the 10th okay or he is in aries from which the fourth house he is aspecting the 10th house okay <clears throat> that is also uh, known uh, as one kind of yoga <coughs> sorry so that that yoga is also very powerful so it is like saying one planet is interested in the other planet okay very very much interested which means i am going to some i am going to one of my friends house yes or my enemy's house or any house i am going which means i am going with an agenda to that house but the other planet is telling me that okay i have some agenda but i want to see if you will fulfill my agenda only then i will fulfill your agenda okay so now in this case if venus is sitting in saturn's house and saturn is not sitting in venus's house it is aspecting libra okay then what does this mean this means that <clears throat> venus and saturn are in this kind of yoga it's like a business deal okay so now uh, venus has to see how much it can satisfy saturn because to the extent which venus satisfies saturn to that extent saturn will satisfy venus because venus needs saturn more than saturn needs venus should i repeat venus needs saturn more than saturn needs venus okay because saturn is not uh, sitting with venus or in the house of venus he is directly aspecting so which means he has a desire to get the things which venus has okay but venus directly wants the things which saturn has because he is sitting in the house of saturn all right so in this case i have seen Uh, in my limited experience the planet which is aspecting the house of that planet which is sitting in his own house i mean in that planet's house like in this case saturn's house where venus is sitting so if saturn aspects venus or sorry the house of venus taurus or libra then to the extent venus fulfills the agenda of saturn then saturn is like all right okay you have fulfilled my agenda so here it is take it i will also give you what you want because you have given me what i needed all right but if saturn but if venus fails to fulfill the agenda then saturn doesn't fulfill the agenda all right and there are million things which will depend on your horoscope sometimes there's another planet which cuts this yoga okay not cuts exactly uh, tries to suppress this yoga okay because in astrology there's no game of plus minus okay so they will try to suppress this yoga by giving some other yoga okay 
so sometimes you will see a conjunction of jupiter saturn and moon so it is like gaj kesri yoga and vish yoga simultaneously so how do you know which yoga is more powerful okay so these are there are unlimited questions to yogas which uh, we will discuss later because this video is only on four types of yogas and there are many other yogas mentioned for more than two planets okay which means three planetary yogas four planetary yogas five planetary yogas okay now uh, which we will uh, discuss uh, in detail later okay individually but this was only for discussing the four types of yogas introduction to yogas okay thank you very much for your patience and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me please go down to the website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him